All right, guys, apologies for the delay there. I had a little Zoom meeting with some other teachers, and I wanted to make sure I gave them their proper respects. I deal with some pretty cool people, so I'm blessed there. I would like to go over a fairly short video here, just kind of, uh, this is a bit about what a Bible teacher is and should be. There's more to it, um, but I think this is the general gist. So if anybody had any questions, this hopefully will clear that up. So let's get into it a bit about the Bible teacher. God's truth has always been and always will be the same. The form it comes in may be different depending on the means he has chosen to dispense it at any time uh, in the historical plan of God. The true biblical meaning of dispensations, it's not, it's not the weird thing that some people like to make it into. It just literally means it's like the applicator, like for a bottle of lotion, you know. So not to minimize what it is because it's God doing it. It's an intentional thing, but it's, it's the method of which his truth is put out there, period. So, for example, before the cross, there was no New Testament available precisely because Christ had not yet been revealed in the person, in person, and the cross had not yet become a historical reality. Though his person and his work were foreshadowed in every divinely ordained sacrifice, uh, in other words, the lamb without spot or blemish being slaughtered or burned, and burned rather, representing the lamb of God rising in the flames of spiritual death to wash away our sins with his blood, the death he died in the darkness to propitiate every single sin of mankind, to pay for, to, to cross out, if you will. Likewise, the manner in which the truth has been dispensed has not always been the same. In the millennium that will soon be here, we are told that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Uh, Isaiah eleven nine there, and also um, Habakkuk 2.14 describe that very well. We can only imagine that this will mean this will mean no dearth or lack of truth, which will flow from a variety of sources. Perhaps even with the res with resurrected church age believers participating as teachers in the kingdom of the Messiah. That will be you and I if we hold on to the end when we have our new bodies. Uh, see Joel two twenty eight through twenty nine for for that um, likely inference. And before the establishment of the Levitical priesthood, whose role was to teach the truth of the law. I'm sorry, the truth through the law and the temple rite, the Lord inspired the patriarchs and believing families, even speaking to them audibly and personally, uh, to Isaac, uh, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and eventually to the unbeliever Cain, even, Genesis 4, 26. After our Lord's personal ministry, wherein God himself would provide God's truth, uh, wherein the word, rather, himself would provide God's truth, he, uh, Hebrews 1, uh, 1 through 2, during the transition of the age of Israel to the age of the church, Apostles, in conjunction with the dispensational dispensation of sign gifts, such as prophecy and tongues, were the primary means God used to dispense his truth to the world, and through the Spirit, through them the Spirit wrote the New Testament. In that brief period, there were also evangelists and pastor teachers, as there are today, but today we no longer have apostles, nor any such special gifts which would provide the word directly. We have the entire completed canon of the Bible. The gift of evangelism today continues to empower men so gifted in their role of spreading the gospel to unbelievers. For the church itself, however, the teaching of the word of God today is primarily the providence of the pastor teacher. What, what that means is that there can be no effective Bible teaching ministry without a man possessing this gift. And it also means that no believer can make any ser serious spiritual headway without giving heed to a ministry so constituted by God. Without the pastor teacher, the progress in spiritual growth of a believer, the progress rather in spiritual growth a believer can make is necessarily limited. If this were not the case, the gift of the scriptural injunctions to honor it would not be so pronounced. Here's 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And as to those whom God appointed as officers in the church, he appointed apostles first in rank, second prophets, and then third teachers. Also 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 24. God has composed the human body in such a way as to give greater honor to the parts that are in short supply, analogous to uh, teaching gifts there. And then uh, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12, Christ himself appointed some of us apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers in order to prepare all of his holy people for their own ministry, our own ministry work, that the entire body of Christ might thus be built up. Uh, here's 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard, in love, because of their work. Here is 1 Timothy 5.17. Let those elders who lead well be held worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in teaching. Here is Hebrews 13.17. Um, 
Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls, and those who must give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be un be unprofitable for you. So it's it's a good it's good that they're around. They're designed to help you, lead you, guide you, um, not let you fall into a pit, things like that. Also, of course, you know, break down the word and kind of how it applies. Unlike many religions, cults, and questionable Christian churches, we're just going to say that. It is not being suggested here that allegiance be granted to any Bible teacher or ministry without proper vetting, nor is it being suggested that respect and loyalty are not things which have to be earned, for Scripture certainly indicates that they must be. Properly appreciated, the job of pastor-teacher is a great responsibility which needs to be prepared for and carried out with all due diligence and humility. And that is in 1 Corinthians 4.1, Galatians 2.7, 1 Thessalonians 2.4, 1 Timothy 1.11, uh, also... 6 verse 20 and Titus 1 3 that's a uh, first Timothy 6 20 here's first Corinthians 9 16 through 17 for if I proclaim, proclaim the gospel in other words the whole realm of the kingdom of truth that is no basis for boasting since the necessity of doing so lies upon me and woe to me if I do not proclaim it now if I do this willingly I do have a reward to look forward to but even if unwillingly I still have a duty which has been entrusted to me to dispense the truth it is critical to understand, therefore, that pastor-teachers are not specially privileged people. Rather, they are specially responsible to the Lord. Here's Matthew 20, 25 through 28. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Pastor-teachers are the good stewards of the truth of the Word of God, or should be, bringing forth from the Bible and from the truths entrusted to them things, of, things old and new for the edification, that's the building up, of Christ's body. Matthew 15, uh, 13, 52 for that. This is an awesome responsibility, as Paul certainly knew. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Let every man evaluate us this way, namely as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now what you are looking for in stewards, moreover, is that one be found who is faithful to the Lord. In other words, um, and who is therefore worthy of one's trust. So they have to be a trustworthy person. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 through 11. For we must all stand before Christ's tribunal so that each of us may receive recompense for what he has accomplished through this body, whether it be good or worthless. Therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord, while we attempt to persuade men, God sees us entirely for what we truly are. And I trust that what we truly are is equally clear to your consciences. For this reason, the scriptures which delineate the parameters of the pastor teacher's job emphasize most heavenly, I'm sorry, most heavily the responsibility he bears toward the Lord to do it right. Here is 1 Timothy 4, 13 through 16. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of the scriptures, to encouragement through the word, to the teaching of the word. Do not neglect the spiritual gift of pastor-teacher, which belongs to you and which was given to you by the Spirit, and which was proclaimed through prophecy and recognized by the laying on of hands of the elders. Be diligent in these things, in other words, studying and teaching the word. Make them your primary concern so that your spiritual progress may be evident to all. Apply them, in other words, the truths you learn, to yourself and to your teaching. Stick faithfully to them, for in doing so you will bring yourself and those who heed you safely home. We're supposed to be guides. That's the whole point of a pastor, by the way, is, is to guide. Second Timothy 2.15 Do your best to present yourself as one, one... Forgive me, guys. Do yourself to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Second Timothy 3.10 but as for you, model yourself on my teaching, my methodology, my plan of action, my faith, my endurance, my love, my perseverance. 2 Timothy 4.2 Proclaim the word, keep at it, whether circumstances are favorable or not. Reprove, rebu rebuke, and encourage with all patience in your teaching. I'm still working on this patience part, guys. Uh, there's a lot of evil out there, and it's hard not to... It's hard not to get on the defensive. Sometimes it's appropriate, I will admit, but that doesn't mean it's always the case. And uh, anyhow, Titus 2, 7 through 8. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teachings, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they had nothing bad to say about this, about us. First Peter 4, 10 through 11, which by the way, that 
that absolutely should be our goal, but that does not stop the evil from uh, saying inappropriate, terrible things about you. So that ultimately is not the only sign of a good teacher uh, because Satan is very much interested. He's called the slanderer, Diabolos. Um, 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11. As each one has received a particular spiritual gift, so let us be ministering it to each other as a good stewards of, of the multifaceted, multifaceted grace of God. If anyone communicates, let him do so as if he were speaking words directly from God. In short, a truly good pastor teacher will be one who is eager to fulfill the Lord's three times given command to Peter. Feed my sheep. That's John 21, 15 through 17. Providing them day by day with spiritual nutrition necessary to grow, progress and produce, necessary to grow, progress and produce for the Lord. Excuse me, guys. More than credentials, which are important, more than experience, which is also important, and certainly more than personality. That consistency is the key quality and characteristic which someone really wanting to grow in Jesus Christ should search out when looking for a prospective pastor teacher. Love for the Lord manifest in love for in the love for his flock, demonstrated by providing for their true spiritual needs. Matthew nine, thirty six through thirty eight. When he saw the crowds he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Mark ten forty two through 45. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants first to be, whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to give his life in the ransom for many. Here's John twenty one seventeen. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said this to him a third time. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. First Thessalonians 2, 6 through 9. I'm trying to keep this short, but there's a lot here, guys. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else. Even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you, just as nursing mothers care for her children. So we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. And finally, 1 Peter 5, 1 through 3, and we'll be done here. To the elders among you, I appeal as a, as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. This is my hope, guys. I fail regularly, and I hope I'm getting better. Um, the truth of the matter is, is, you know, like in regards to um, credentials, I wanted to be go, I wanted to go to seminary when I was younger. The problem was, is when I got there, I realized they don't teach anything in depth like they used to they don't even teach you the original languages anymore you know the 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 basic requirement to to actually get a degree in pastoral leadership and teaching and teaching and whatnot um has less basic greek in it than these these lessons i'm reading to you which is absolutely astounding to me and the spirit is greater than any any potential learning we could have and so to understand to understand these things does take a certain amount of understanding of, of the languages, but it also takes a great amount of humility to accept when we're wrong. Um, it does, it does, ah, it's, it's hard to explain, but essentially I feel as though I was kept from it because things have become so watered down and evil that uh, I, I perhaps would have ruined any potential I have to do what I do right here. And although, you know, this, this channel remains small, um, while I have the time to do it and, and I'm not caught up too much with other, you know, professional work, um, I, I, I do what I can to be anything I can for you guys. Some of you have made mention that you've perhaps never heard things this way or, or to this level of depth, and that's great. Um, I, I, I have excellent materials that I work with. My teacher is fantastic. You know, we don't agree on everything perfectly, but when it comes to the things that matter, the depths of the, the, the meaning in the word and, and, and what it actually stands for, I, I think we can agree as, as much as is humanly possible for two sinners who love our Lord. And I really hope that you guys can see in these lessons that I care so deeply. I don't care how big this channel gets. I care that it helps you. 
And, and again, everything that I just read there is my aim and then some. Um, I'm still working on it. I'm still, I'm still trying. And for those of you that have, have seen any of this progression, thank you. Uh, your forgiveness is absolutely fuel for the fire for me to keep going. Um, let me know how I did, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe. Again, as I've said before, all of this stuff is shadow banned heavily, uh, but that doesn't mean that God's word doesn't get where it's supposed to be. So I have faith that it goes where it's supposed to. But if you guys have any, uh, if you have any desire to share, you putting it out there directly will get it to where it's supposed to be much better than this unfortunately evil platform could ever do and and in spite of all of that it is still growing however slow um i wish the numbers that were subscribed were the legitimate amount of people that were watching these videos i know that's not the case statistically less than i think like 30 percent of subscribers actually watch but even if there's only a few of us it's worth it and you guys are worth my time and i do care for you all deeply and uh, i look forward to this is hard for me guys it is especially with so much going on at home and the stress of, of no job but I don't think I would have it any if, if I could do this and not need income I would do this literally till it's it's time to go home but I'm trying to I'm trying to take advantage while the while the grass is green so um, thank you guys I really do try to do this I hope you appreciate it and it's helping you. I know it is for some of you, but I'm not perfect. And, and, and if I can do anything to make it better, please do let me know. Bless you guys. I hope you're having a good day.